Thank you for supporting SHARE, and thank you for coming to this SHARE Our Story event. We are honored and we are blessed to have our good friend, Sister Esther Fuera, headmistress of the amazing Hagima Girls School, as our featured speaker. Please join me in a round of applause as we welcome Sister Esther. school. The school started as a missionary school 
1928. So it has gone through different hands. Started as a missionary school and it was a middle school. Later on, that school was given to taken by the government because once in Tanzania we had something called nationalization. So it was nationalizing and it was taken by the, the government, it was run by the government. Later on, it has been given to private school. Now I'd like to tell you, when we took that school in 1988, it was gone out, it, it, didn't, it didn't look like a school. We started from the scratch. No window, no doors. So we just started, we said, God is before us. What we are having as intention, we hope it is very good. Then we started from there to call, to bring in the girls to start the secondary school. It wasn't easy. We had very few girls to come. Why few girls? The school's there, the girls speak, they can't come. We have cultural problem where still the parents having two kids, one is a boy and another one is a girl, they will feel that a boy is supposed to go to school and the girl is supposed to stay home to cook meals, to help at home, to fetch water and to take care of the young boys and girls. So still we had a few people to come. Not only that, we had another problem. In the region where I come from and where I'm working, that is Bukoba, most of the families do not have enough money. It is a private school run by the missionary, by the missionary or by the Catholic school, uh, the Catholic church. But still, we have to charge some little money because the government is not at a position of supporting the private school financially. So the parents are supposed to pay for the tuition. The parents do not have money to send the kids to school. So they like to send the kids, they prefer to send the boys. Whoever we try to send the boy, the girl, she or he doesn't have the money. So we have been working in this in such a situation for the past 25 years. In, in 2010, we met Cher. Cher, just it was like a miracle to have a Cher organization in our school where they started to help us, to help us, to support us in giving books, in helping, furnishing the school with whatever you gave them to bring to Africa or whatever they collected it from different ways, which I don't know. So we are I'm happy that I'm here because of share and I'm happy to see that I've just given me I've been given this chance to meet you as supporters of share. Thank you very much for supporting share and I will continue to talk to you of whatever you like me to talk to you. If you ask me any questions, but I would like to say again, thank you for supporting Share. Share has been your light. Share has been our friends. You have seen that kid. To me, she thinks I'm just a hero, but Sharon is a hero to me. When she was 15, she thought of the rest of Africa. I've been trying with the other people, but I have. it was my first time to see such a kid, a young girl doing such wonderful or having such wonderful reason. To me, it is not only that I benefit from whatever they give us in terms of money and materials, but also the inspiration of Shannon herself. Shannon is having the age equal to the girls I'm having at the high school. That's what we are teaching. That you say, Yes, we are poor, we don't have much to give, but still, we believe that you can do something. Look what Sharon has been doing. She, I told the parents that you are having everything. I've been into their house, they're having everything. <laughs> and I asked them, I think that you just, you must be crazy. How do you live these things here and come to Africa why we don't have anything? And then they say, you know, that is inspiration. 
and I pray that your inspiration will grow and you will stay. So, maybe after saying those few words about myself, maybe I don't think that I should go up and down and talk about the other things before you ask me what you think that you can ask me about this school. I'm a girl from my family. I was born in a family of boys and girls. I've been lucky my parents were di different from other parents. They could support me to do things, but I've just devoted myself as a nun to work for the girls. And I'm happy that you see, whatever I'm trying to do, there are people who are supporting me. You are my supporters by financial, by materials, but also to come here to listen to me, to hear what I'm doing, it is another support. I will be going home tomorrow, but I'm going very strong knowing that people in America, they are real good, they will like to support me and they will continue to support me. Please ask me questions. <laughs> Yes, please. How much is tuition at Hakima? For the time being, we can summarize our tuition that is 650 and, and 50. I don't know how people make it. Is that true? Is what you do? Uh, I just say 650 because we just put it aside the tuition including the tree. The school fees include the tuition, accommodation, and whatever we do at school. Pay salaries, it is in that. And then, there are some of the things which we have to provide to, to the girls, like uniforms. We don't call that uh, school fees. We give them uniform, we give them dictionaries, we give them a lot of things which we think that they can't, they can't buy them at home. Then they bring a little money and we do shopping on their behalf. So it is 650 US dollars. How do the parents pay for that though? Is it the economy, the families? Um, the parents are not afforded to pay. Most of the parents, for those who are maybe teachers, they will collect that money for maybe throughout the year paying in installation. Some will sell their properties because now things are changing. Parents are getting, are changing, are understanding the real or the value, uh, the value of educating girls. So they will sell their properties to bring the kids to school. But at the same time, this is the secret, don't tell it to someone. I keep girls who can't pay. Because I was born and I'm working in a place where there is HIV, AIDS, death. And then I have got a good number of girls who are orphans. To the board, to the board of directors of the school, they will say everybody is supposed to pay. That is what we say when we sit on the table of this country. Everybody to come to this school is supposed to pay. But just put yourself on my side in the office, or and you call yourself headmistress or principal, or whatever you can call yourself. The first year the girls come to school, they have both my parents. Maybe they have sold a certain property and they come to school. After one year, when we come to report to the office, the father of so and so is dead. After another year, Another parent and another person will come in and say, the mother of so-and-so is dead. What will you do? Do you send such, such a kid to go home to get his school fees? I'm, not, I'm talking to the adults who can help me with the advice. <laughs> <laughs> so it is difficult. Sometimes it is a difficulty and sometimes it is a secret. We don't tell the people that these this so and so they are not paying. But at the same time, I've been lucky. Share, for example, is paying the scholarships. And I have few friends who pay the scholarships. They give me money and then I connect <coughs> the girls to their sponsors. They write letters, tell them what they are doing. So it works like that. What are the 
impressed by or changed by when they interact with the American girls? What, what are they, what do they learn from them? What do they comment about most often? One is what I have mentioned already, to see how much people can give, it teaches them them to be good. Shannon at 15, she just had the eyes to look into the poverty of the girls she met. She is doing such a great job. Look, she is in the exam. She's taking the exam, but still, she's remembering to say a word to Sister Esther, who is going to talk to the people of Shane. So, such is a big teaching. Yes, what happens to the girls when they graduate? We thank God that Ekima has been doing very well. As I mentioned, we started from nothing, now we are getting to success. A good example, they passed the exam, they all passed the exam. Our national is having a national examination. So they take the exam and they pass the exam. So they just graduated from our school and they go to the next school, which is two years. And is like what you call the junior college. They stay for two years. They stay for two years and they go to the university for four or five years. In 19, in 2010, the school, our school, Enkima, <coughs> ranked it as the first out of 155 schools in the region. We just say in the past 10 years. Between 90 to 96% of our girls go to junior college. And out of that, out of that, about 60% they go to university. Then they graduate as journalists, they graduate as lawyers, they graduate as doctors. The people they didn't expect to do anything. And without the support, all those talents would have been buried in themselves. That's what I have said, that in the region of 155 schools, they run me as the first in the region. <laughs> with the all boys schools, with the all girls schools, with those whom they thought that they could do better, but still they made it. I don't know what they did this year. I will be anxious to know. I've been traveling for the past three, three months. <laughs> so when I go home, I will be surprised. <laughs> but they are doing very well. I would, I would like to invite you to come and talk to them. Maybe I'm not a good representative, but they, I think they can present themselves better than what I do to you. <laughs> yes, please ask me questions. Do you have time for one more question? Do most of the girls come from families in Tanzania? And if so, how far away do they come to get to the school? The school is a boarding school because they come from far. They are not from within the, 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 the campus. So some of the, the students come as far as 200 kilometers away. Even those who come from near to not be less than 10 kilometers. But again, we have the boarding school we prefer the boarding school because it is only the boarding school where we can have table, books, electricity, if any, to study. If they will go home as day scholars, then when they reach home, they will go to the kitchen. They will go to fetch water. The attendance will be poor because another day, the parents will need them to maybe to go and be gather this, the firewood, something like that. So being in the body, we support them. That's why we think that our girls are doing very well because they devote most of their time in the studies. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you.